Hello, I wanted to do a, an unboxing of this Ethereal Visions Illuminated Tarot deck by Matt Hughes. I got this deck some time ago and I have not opened it yet and I figured I would do that on video here with you so you can see what the contents look like. I'm curious to see what they look like and glad to share it with you. So the artwork of this deck is based on the Art Nouveau movement, and there is the standard little white book that comes with it. And then you've got this 78 card tarot deck. What I've read on the box description is that there is an extra card that is included that supplements the major arcana. So this is technically an 80 card deck. And it's got this beautiful gold foil stamping on each of the cards here. So this is the Fool. And I'll move this aside. You've got the Magician. And this is the one that's on the back of the box. And then you have the High Priestess, which is on the front of the box here. She's lovely. She's holding this gold book here. Move this aside too. The Empress. I always like seeing the different depictions of the Empress in all of the tarot decks because she's really the uh, the quintessential kind of marker for beauty and Venus. And here she's got her Venus symbol right here. It's very subtle. It's very graceful. It's a nice card. The Emperor and the Hierophant, the Lover's card, the Chariot. I like the celestial theme behind the Chariot. Strength card. Okay. It looks like she's already tamed the the lion in this one. She's not necessarily struggling. It looks like it's sort of the after picture here. It's a very docile lion. Okay. This is fun to look at. You've got the hermit. Clearly knows where he's going. The wheel. Wow. It's beautiful. Justice card. The hanged man. That's interesting. It looks like he's strung himself up there. He's obviously has a hand in a part of his situation, doesn't he? You can definitely see that. I like the the added meaning that this brings, just with the art here. Death. Okay. Temperance. Oh wow! Look at that. That's beautiful. I love the gold foil stamping here. The devil, these two figures down here, you have the tower. Okay, so there's one person falling out of the tower. He's falling backwards. The star card. Hmm. The moon card. Oh, that's so beautiful. I love that. It's a lot of like these ethereal females that have muted tones and then there's a lot of these single female uh, cards here. The sun is depicted by a woman as well. Judgment. This one doesn't have a lot of the decorative gold plating, plating on it or the stamping. The world. Again, you have these sort of four figures is what we saw. The well. So these must be the extra two cards that he's included. Yeah, it is, because it's card 22. Okay. 
the artist is card 23. I'm just sort of taking it in. It's interesting. He's looking at nature and it's pure form with all the elements here and he's not clothed. He's sort of vulnerable. He's also got these wings of uh, Hermes, Mercury on his heels here. Interesting. Now we're getting into the court cards. I love this. Oh, look, look how beautiful. They've got this matching crowns. They definitely look, look like a couple. King of Cups, Queen of Cups. Look have very pleasant expressions on their faces. This guy even looks very peaceful. You don't see the horse underneath him. You just see him. He's not, you don't see that he's in movement. Leaves a lot to the imagination, just like the cups do. Very imaginative in qualities. Page of cups here. Ace of cups. Wow. That's nice. I love that. It's very bold. It's, you have the two of cups. Three of Cups, the Four. Oh, no. Oh, five of Cups. Yeah, you still have the two behind him here. He's faced a different direction in this card as in, uh, as in the Rider Waite deck where he's faced towards the left. Here he's faced towards the right, down. Um, but I like that there's, I like that there's still this theme of like keeping everything kind of consistent with the two behind him. Not all is lost with this card. Six of Cups, very sweet. His children, planting memories. Seven of Cups. Wow. This is probably one of the more interesting depictions of the Seven of Cups I've seen. It looks like a fan uh, fantasy. Look at this dragon, he's like kind of fiercely guarding these cups. The mask wearer, you've got the skull here. There's a lot of extra symbols. The Eight of Cups. Wow, that looks like a daunting task. <laughs> All of them are in alignment here. The Nine of Cups. Yes. Cool, cool. The Ten of Cups. Oh, this is so sweet. I like this, the cups here. I like this suit. He's done this well. King of Pentacles, Queen of Pentacles. They don't have the gold crowns like the uh, cups couple did. Their crown, or I guess their their power here is the pentacle itself. You have the Knight of Pentacles. Again, you don't see him on a horse. You see the shield which is pretty cool. It's not a gold shield, sort of gold is around him. Okay. The Page of Pentacles. Does she look sad or does she look like she's snickering? She's like giggling. What? That's interesting. Wait, it's hard to tell her emotion, but she's definitely looking at this Page of Pentacles. Okay. She's looking at the Ace. Okay, here you go. I like that, that, I like the aces. Very bold, just like the ace of cups. Two of pentacles, that's nice. Three of pentacles. They're all kind of figuring out a plan here. Four of pentacles. There's the five. The eight. Okay. Nine. I'm really connecting with a lot of these images here. I think they really are just very beautifully spoken. It gives a fresh perspective. I use the Rider weight tarot a lot and I get very used to the way that the art is shown. And so this is nice to have a variety. It might um, help to kind of switch up the storyline a little bit in doing readings. King of Swords. Okay, so I'm looking for the gold. Do you see the golds? I mean, here you have sort of like the 
sword and the stone here, the X, what is Excalibur? Um, almost looks like the stone is shining. You don't see that with the Queen of Swords though. She doesn't have any gold in her, in her card. She lacks the luster, which is uh, very telling of the meaning of the card. The Knight of Swords as well, they're, they mean business. They're pretty straightforward, no frills with extra gold except for the borders, which are very fancy. Um, but I like that because it's, again, it really supplements the meaning of the card. And here we again, they have again this, like this bold image of the hand here. He's grasping onto the sword itself, not the handle. That's interesting. Uh-huh. Okay. I like this crescent moon here on the two of swords. This is so beautiful. I love this deck. I'm really glad that I got it. You should get this deck too, if you like the images. I'm connecting with them. Five of swords, six of swords, seven, okay. There's the eight. She looks, um, she, this is interesting. She's blindfolded, yes, but she kind of looks like she's lounging. She doesn't look like she's as, as, as in as much misery as some of the other Eight of Swords cards that I've seen. She's like, you know, chilling in her confusion. This one is more of an extreme. You can see the, the difference between the mood that's shown here, how it escalates from the Eight of Swords to the Nine of Swords, sort of her torment here. And it's all in the mind. Look at this Crown of Swords there around the skull. It's like this ghosts are haunting her. That's interesting. Okay. Oh, the Ten of Swords. Nothing ever good comes from this one. Well, that's not true. It can be the end of a situation, but it's not the best picture to get when you're... It definitely elicits a response. Okay, so the King of Wands and the Queen of Wands here. Okay. They're humble, these two. I'm, I was actually expecting them to have a little bit more flash. Here the King of Wands has the gold, just like the King of Swords does, the Queen doesn't. I'm actually surprised by this. Um, my personal opinion is that I would have liked to see more gold on her, especially maybe some jewelry, because she can be a bit flashy sometimes. It makes sense the Queen of Pentacles loves jewelry too, but she loves the attention, so hmm, that's, that's interesting. Okay, the Knight of Wands, Page of Wands. Ace of Wands. Okay. Very dreamy like this one. Has a cuppy feel to even the, the wands, the fire. It's watered down. You can tell that it almost looks like the water watercolors. You see these sort of sprouts here, but very um, subtle again. Two of Wands. Okay. Three of Wands. I like these. There's the four. There's no people in the Four of Wands card. It's just the home. And this angel, maybe it's a protection angel. Just kind of looking out over the home, possibly. Five of Wands. Okay. Six. Interesting. Hmm. I like that. Seven of Wands. Eight of Wands, very simple. Nine of Wands. And then here you have the ten. Wow, okay, overall, I I really like this, really like this deck. I'm going to do a, a spread, I'm going to do a reading with them and see what comes up here. When I shuffle a deck for the first time, I like to put my energy into it. So I'm really focusing on infusing my energy into the cards and really just 
you know, touching all of the cards, I think is really important to connect with all of them. Like we just went through all of them together. Um, I'm not going to be doing reversals. I'm going to be shuffling them upright and doing the reading with them upright. I just want to give it a really good mix, really good shuffle here. Um, <clears throat> so when they're all in order, you have to be extra. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to do my normal um, interview spread that I do. Whenever I get a new deck, I always like to do the same spread. This is maybe something that you can try too. So the first uh, card will be, show me who you are. What is your energy like? Who are you? What is this, this deck? This may not be the same card that you pull if you do this and you have this deck. Okay, here we go. Seven of Wands. Okay, so he's, this is what, who this, this deck is to me. The Seven of Wands. Okay, so the traditional meanings of the Seven of Wands would be feeling overwhelmed, conquering opposition, um, feeling like they're in competition, but also being really busy, being able to um, tackle anything that comes its way. So it feels like Wands is also very fiery. It's like very up to the task. So if you're doing this in readings, the, uh, the personality of this deck to me would be something where it sort of stands out or is sort of above the other messages or above the other cards maybe or the other decks in a way. So there's a, a sense of advantage with this uh, card. He's got a pretty firm stance here. Uh, there's a lot going on, maybe a lot of opinions that other people have that are throwing his way and he's able to respond to everything. So he's getting it done. He's just like kind of pulled in many directions. So maybe there's just a lot going on, a lot of messages, a lot of busyness, a lot can come through where the reader maybe, or uh, the personality of this deck just has a lot to say. Okay, so we'll leave that here. And then the second card will be, what is your greatest strength as a deck? How can I use you the best? What is your greatest strength? This one. The sun, woo, it's super bright, it's super gold, right? It's beautiful, it's very um, noticeable, it's very powerful. Again, gold comes from the sun, okay? It's very shiny. It's shining. <laughs> it's very obvious what this means. And she's like presenting it in a nice way. <laughs> she's like the Vanna White of the ethere Ethereal Visions deck. <laughs> okay. And then I like to ask, what is your greatest weakness? Sorry to ask that. Oh, it's the Five of Pentacles. It's like, this is actually a card of weakness. So it's saying like weakness is weakness. It's saying weakness of um, lack. Feeling like some things are lacking or um, feeling this pentacle is just like, it doesn't have everything. Interesting. There's something missing. I don't see what could be missing from this deck. I rather think that everything is there. It's, looks like everything is pretty completed. Maybe this is the element of like having some cards that have more gold than others. Could literally just be that. Some are more filled in than others. Okay. It's always good to see a weak card as a weakness rather than a strength card as a weakness. sort of lessens the, or diminishes the effect of it being weak, if that makes sense. Then the next card I like to ask, or the next question, is please tell me about our relationship, reader, and tarot deck. Nope, there's two and I just want one. 
What is our relationship like? Five of Swords. Oh, so sad. Hmm. It's interesting you have two fives, one for the weakness and one for the relationship. The relationship in this card is the two people walking away. So, interesting. This can be a card of jealousy. It can be a card of different a viewpoint as well. But actually, this isn't a bad thing to have your own viewpoint. And especially if this deck brings out other views or you see other things that you wouldn't normally see in other tarot decks, this isn't a bad I wouldn't consider this to be a bad thing. There's no judgment in any of this anyway. But um, it's interesting. It's like these people are walking away with their perspectives and he's sort of stuck on all of these new ideas or new perspectives. Okay. Hmm. There could be a bit of a challenge in a good way. I'm up to it. Using this. So the last card that I usually pull in this spread is one of... What is the message that you have for me as a reader? But since you're watching, I'm going to be doing it for you. What is the message that this deck has for you? As a viewer. The Emperor. Wow. Yeah, the Emperor is a boss, right? <laughs> it's authority. It's something powerful in hand that you can use as a practical tool. And um, there's a sense of reputation as well. So I feel like this deck in general is gaining reputation through the people that order it and like it. It's a very, uh, it's one that gives somebody authority gives you authority. This might be a good deck. If you're drawn to it and you're watching this video, I would, and if, if you were thinking about getting it, I would. Okay. Especially because you have the Emperor card, someone who's in their own, who's in their own power. Let's see what the Shadow card is. Queen of Wands, that's me. No. Um, I don't know. Maybe. But she can be like the, uh, the reader sometimes. She does magic. So all in all, I think this is a really um, beautiful deck and this was fun unboxing this with you. Thanks for watching and take care.